Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about avoiding stupid mistakes in math. Okay, so if you're one of the bajillion people who took the AMC 10B a week ago and got number two wrong, I feel for you. Literally, six points off the test for the dumbest mistake ever. And so, the agony that I felt that encompassed my soul after I realized I got number two wrong, well, that inspired me to make this video. And even if you didn't get that specific problem wrong, or just aren't a total math contest nerd like me, everyone has made stupid mistakes in math. Whether it is a competition, test, quiz, homework, it's a loss of points that can be seriously avoided. In this video, I'll show you a bunch of helpful tips that you can use to avoid sillies. So let's get started. Okay, the very first thing to do is keep track of what kinds of problems you got wrong a lot. For example, do you find that you always mess up your combinatorics? I keep a big spreadsheet of all of my scores and all of the things I get wrong and what type or difficulty of problem it was. It might be a pain to remember to update it, but it proves really helpful and can lead to great insights about what kinds of mistakes you make. The second tip is to like and sub- Wait, how did that get in there? Okay, the actual second tip is to fix those reading mistakes because probably the worst kind of mistakes are reading mistakes. It is literally so annoying when you get a problem wrong and you realize that it is just because you are incapable of reading and misread the question. I use this handy dandy trick to fix that. Reread each question again before moving on to the next one. No exceptions. It literally does not take that long to just read a question and believe me, you will save a ton of mistakes by doing that. I don't know if you do this, but I make so many arithmetic mistakes. I have this vivid memory of fourth grade me solving a super hard math problem. At the time it was hard. Looking back it wasn't very hard. And on the very last step, I said that 4 times 7 equals 36. Isn't that just so nice? Yay! So I might be very caught up on this specific memory, but arithmetic mistakes are really just so sad. And so I decided that it would be best to stop making those mistakes. Generally, it's helpful to do the arithmetic twice or do the inverse operation as I showed in these two examples. Just reading over your arithmetic doesn't always work because you might not actually be reading that carefully. Okay, now I'm going to get into a pretty controversial section, checking your work. Different people have different ways of doing this, but this is what I do. First of all, is it even worth it to check your work? Short answer, yes. It might take time, but you can find a lot of mistakes. However, on tests where you really need to rush, sometimes it isn't totally needed. It depends on how prone you are to making tons of mistakes. If you follow tip number one, keeping track of what you get wrong, maybe you could only check the problems you're prone to getting wrong, or you could just be more careful about checking the problems you're prone to getting wrong. Now, we have to decide when to check your work. Different people have different views on this one as well. Some say that you should go back at the end and give yourself the last 5 or 10 minutes to double check. There's a couple of issues I have with that. Firstly, you might run out of time, so checking at the end is kind of risky. Secondly, you might forget a lot of the info about the problems by the time you double check them. This means that you're going to spend a lot of time just reacquainting yourself with the problem, time you could be using for something else. What I do instead is I check the problem right after I solve it, before moving on to the next one. I'm really just in the habit of doing that, so I almost never forget to double check. Now, we move on to how to check your work. There are four main ways of doing this. Firstly, plug the answer back into the problem. If you can do this, you're golden. Secondly, for shorter problems, you can try literally redoing the whole thing, or redoing parts of it. The second time you do it, you can do it faster and less deliberately. Did you get the same answer as your first one? Another thing you can do is ask yourself, does the answer make sense? A lot of math competitions try to make the answers practical. One time, for a distance rate time kind of problem, I got the car was traveling at something around 1,000 miles per hour. I didn't really think twice about it and moved on. It turned out the actual answer was 40. But also, Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that all math problems are going to be realistic. I mean, 
Now is not the time to question the fabric of time and space when it comes to Alice, Bob, and Carol spending their entire life savings on watermelons. You're on a time crunch, man. Maybe later. And there's the most obvious way, just reading through your work to see if you made any mistakes. This is probably the most common way of double checking, but it has some downsides. Sometimes you just kind of skim over what you're doing instead of look deeply into it. And that's when you do this thing I call mental high-fiving, which is where you kind of just assume you're right, even though you don't look that deep. And you can miss a lot of mistakes with that. Still, if you're short on time, this can be helpful, just not all-encompassing. And that's the end of the checking your work section. Here's a couple more tips you can use. There's this super cool thing called casting out nines, which you can use to double check arithmetic. You need to have some background knowledge on modular arithmetic in order to follow, so if you don't, check out the video that's suggested in the corner. It's kind of complicated, but it works really well. Just bear with me. So remember that handy dandy trick people learn for finding the remainder when we divide by nine? Remember, it's the sum of the digits. So for example, using the number 859, we can find that the sum of the digits is 22, which is congruent to four mod nine. So you have four left over when you divide by nine, or 859 is four more than a multiple of nine. We can use this trick to check our arithmetic. Let's say that we do the arithmetic and get that 859 times 53 is 45,527. We get that 859 is congruent to four mod nine and 53 is congruent to eight mod nine. So this means that 45,527 should be congruent to four times eight mod nine, which is 32. And that mod nine is gonna be five. And we can check from the digits trick 45,527 is congruent to five mod nine. So it works. You can do the same thing for other operations, not just multiplication. Another thing is just writing your work out large and neat. If you find yourself making a lot of algebra or simplification mistakes, like for example, losing a negative, it can be really helpful to just write your work out larger and neater. It's not like there's a limit on how much paper you can use, so there's literally no disadvantage to doing this. Writing it out large and neat can also help with double checking because you can see exactly what you got wrong and it's easier for you to follow your work. Finally, let's look into timing. Sometimes I find myself messing up a lot of stuff on the last couple of questions because I ran out of time, so I end up rushing a ton. And so it's always helpful to do practice tests with a timer. After the timer goes off, you should still keep working and try the questions you didn't get to, but don't count them towards your practice score. Also, on speed-oriented tests, for example, Math Count Sprint Round or AMC8, it is helpful to give yourself 10% less time than the real test, just in case. That's all the tips I have for today. If there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed.